we are talking about the measure of love. Amen. Um, because many people say they love. I know you've told people you love them before. Amen. And as much as we, we say we love, we love God, and we love the church, we love the pastor, we love our mother, we love our father. We say we love, we love, and so love has become a word we use anytime, praise God, without really understanding what we, we are saying. So when somebody says, I love you, somebody says, I get a feeling, amen. But when you look into love, you realize that love is not a feeling, amen. Or tell somebody love is not a feeling. If love was a feeling, anytime you feel like you love somebody, you love the person, amen. When the feeling changes, what do you do? You go, Amen. Oh, praise God. If that was how we were loving, will it work? If I'm loving you based on feeling, if today I love you, tomorrow my feelings change. I don't love you anymore. Praise God. So, so you realize that that is not the proper measure of love. So when we say we love, what is the proper measure of love? How can you really know that you love? Amen. And the Bible clearly explains it in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. So we'll be starting from verse number 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, the charity there is love, amen. I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal, amen. The Bible is saying that I'm not going to speak the tongues of men. It means you speak chi, you speak ga, and then there's the tongue of angels. The Bible is saying that even if you speak the tongue of men and the tongue of angels and you don't have love, Hit that thing for me. Yeah. You have become like that one. Amen. You are just making what? Noise. So the Bible is saying that love is not about making noise. So if you speak in the tongues of men, you can speak. You can speak in tongues of angels and you don't have love. You have just become what? A noise maker. Amen. Oh, praise God. So you are making noise to people. Why? Because upon all you are doing, there is no love behind it. Amen. You are just making noise because there is no love behind what you are doing. It means that in the kingdom of God, if there is no love, what we do becomes what? Useless. Amen. Oh, praise God. So what, whatever you are doing, you must do it out of what? Oh, I can't tell you. You must do it out of what? Love. Amen. If there is no love in what you are doing, the Bible says that you have become what? A noise maker. Hallelujah. And I don't want you to become a noise maker. Verse number two. He says that, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, all what? Faith, so that I could remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. Amen. No, but Jesus said that if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you can tell this mountain that be wrought, be moved, and the mountain will be what? Will be moved. Amen. But he is saying that. If that is the case, and now you cry, you don't have faith like a mustard seed. You have all the faith in the world. Hallelujah. Charlie, that is powerful. Oh, amen. If you have all the faith in the world, what would you do? You command money. Wonderful. What else would you do? Some of you become the president of the, of the country. Amen. He said, if you have all the faith in the world so that you can move mountains. Hallelujah. That is a powerful level of faith. Amen. Because with, a, with small faith, you can move mountains. And the Bible is saying that now you have all the faith in the world. My God, it means that you can do great things. Hallelujah. May you get there. Hallelujah. I said, may you get to that level of faith. Amen. That you can do great things in your generation. But the Bible is saying that although you have all the faith in the world and you move mountains and you don't have love, you are what? Nothing. Amen. Hey. Maybe men will see you as a great person or something. But in the eyes of God, you are what? You are nothing. You know, the Bible says that what shall they profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Amen. It's like you have gained nothing. Amen. It's the same analogy here. How can you have all the faith in the world and you are still nothing? How can you have all the money in the world and you are still nothing? How can you have all the cars in the world and you are still nothing? How can you have all the friends in the world and you are still nothing? The Bible says that if you don't have love, you are what? You are nothing. Do you know what it means? It means that if even you don't have money and you have love, you are something. Who you will be, hallelujah. Once you have love, you are what? You are something. Because love is what? Valuable. Praise God. Are you understanding me? Now, it's interesting. So, he says that 
if you can do all these things and you don't have love, you are what? You are nothing. Which love? Christ is God talking about. Amen. We will get there. Amen. We will understand the love he is talking about. Amen. Verse number three. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Hey, this is serious. He said, if I give all my goods to what? To feed the poor. And I give my body to be burned. Is it easy to give your body to be burned? But the Bible is saying, even if you give your body to be burned, that painful thing, that difficult thing, if you give your body to be burned, and you don't have love, there is no benefit. If I so be any day, in him. There is no benefit even if you give your body to be burned because you are not doing it out of what? Out of love. In the same way, I can give you money. Oh, take 500 CDs. Use it to support yourself. If I am not doing it out of love, the Bible says it profits me what? Nothing. I can dash you my car. As long as I am not doing it out of love, it profits me what? Nothing. I can come to church. As long as I'm not doing it out of love, it profits me what? Nothing. I can give my offering. As long as I'm not doing it out of love, it profits me what? Nothing. Amen. So, so you can see that there are many people who are doing things and the profit they are getting out of it is zero. Amen. I don't know if you have heard people say, My bar, sorry, Sam, you hushi. My bum pie, Sam, you hushi. I've given offerings, I've not seen anything. I've given my tithes, I've not seen. There are many people who have said, I've done a lot of things and I've not seen any profit from it. Now, one of the reasons you don't see profits is that the Bible is saying you are not doing it out of love. Amen. Let's go. Now, it begins to tell us what love is. Praise God. Because some of us think that love is a feeling. Amen. Love is what? A feeling. But now the Bible begins to. Now we know that if you are not doing things out of love, you are actually wasting your time or you are a prophet. You nothing. So we now want to know what love is. Amen. So that when we know love, what love is, we can walk in love. Amen. The Bible is saying that love suffers long and is kind. When we say long suffering, what does it mean? Suffer long. Amen. It means that there is a level of what? Endurance with love. Praise God. So love will not say that today I love you, tomorrow the love is gone. Ati if remain so. Amen. And, and many of us have been there before. Praise God. Where today you say you love somebody, tomorrow the love is what? It's gone. Amen. You know why? You think love is a feeling, amen. Or when, when the, de- the time you said you love the person, things were good. The economy was what? Was booming. The person's economy, or not the country's economy. The person's economy was what? Was booming. When the person's economy stopped booming, your love also what? Went away. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. It happens, amen. Sometimes you love somebody because they are looking very beautiful. The time their beauty vanishes, then the love also does what? vanishes. But the Bible is saying that love suffers what? Long. It means that love can go the long mile with you. You know, even when you are married, I don't even know who put it there. They say something like, for better, for worse. But now I've seen that people are even changing it. They made it for better, for best. Amen. I'm not even people are changing it now. In the olden days, they used to make it for better, for what? For worse. But now people are changing it for better, for what? For best. Amen. That means that when it becomes worse, you can run away. Is it biblical? It's not biblical. Hallelujah. But the Bible is saying that love suffers what long. Amen. It means that love endures. Love sticks by people. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. It doesn't matter what I am going through. If you say you love me, you should be able to stick to me. You should be able to stick by me. When I'm going through my down moments, when I am going through my depressive moments, when I am going through my low moments, you should be able to do what? To stick with me. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Love suffereth what? Long. And not, not that you are being with me for one week or two weeks. So you should be able to be with me for what? For long. Amen. Love suffereth long. Today we live in a generation that don't know how to suffer. Amen. When things are not good, they find another way to go. When things don't look too good, they desert you. When things shake a little, you won't find them anymore. Amen. When police come and catch you, you won't see them. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Am I talking to somebody? When your landlord is sacking you, you will see them. Hallelujah. Why? There is no word. Long suffering. Amen. But the Bible is saying that that is one of the... And look at the things he's saying. The first thing he says about the characteristics of love or the measure of love is that love is what? Long suffering. Amen. 
It doesn't matter the circumstances that are going through. I am sticking by you. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? And I've told you several times that no situation is permanent. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? No situation is what? It's permanent. So the fact that somebody is down today and you have run away to somebody else who is up, that person who is up too can come down. Amen. So is it that you are going to live your life by jumping from one person who is down to another person who is up, then you jump, then you jump. You can't live your life like that. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Please, am I talking to somebody? It's something you must what? You must understand for yourself. Amen. So love is what? Long-suffering. Tell somebody love is long-suffering. Number two, he says, love is kind. Love is what? Kind. Amen. What is kindness? Love is what? Kind. Gentle. That is what love is. Amen. So love is not what? Love is not harsh. Amen. Oh, praise God. And it is a characteristic of love. It means that when you love somebody, you must be what? You must be kind to that person. Amen. What do kind people do? Oh, how many of you know kind people? What made you say this person is kind? What did they do for you before you said they are kind? Somebody say they go all out for you. Amen. Amen. So that means that they are what? They are kind. Amen. Even if they have food, they do what? They share with you so that you'll be able to do what? To enjoy. When they see that you are suffering, they do everything they can to remove you out of what? Out of your suffering. That is what? Love. Amen. That is what? Kindness. Hallelujah. Ask someone, what was the last time you were kind? What was the last time you were kind? What was the last time you shared your food with somebody? And, and it's a problem because today, I can't say I love this, this man. Amen. Oh, praise God. Someone say, hey, pastor, how can you love him? Amen. Oh, praise God. Am I talking to somebody? Oh, praise God. But when I go and I say, oh, I, I love this one. People say, oh, it's normal. But pastor, be careful. Amen. True of us. Oh, Amen. Why? Because we have misinterpreted what what? What love is. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So today there is no love. Amen. We have defined love and we are working the kind of love we want. We know. Praise God. So that today, if two people ask you for credit, and if you're a guy and two people ask you for credit, a man and a woman, you say, oh, now bear my dead end. And, oh. and then you send the credit. The woman will ask you for five CDs, but you send the woman, instead of sending the woman five and sending the man five, you send 10 CDs to what? To the woman. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Why? Because we have now misinterpreted love. Praise God. So instead of being kind to everybody because we love everybody or we are supposed to love everybody, what we have become is that now we are selective about the people we should do what? We should love. Amen. Oh, praise God. So the Bible is saying that love is kind. And I'm asking you a question. When was the last time you were kind to somebody? I don't know whether it is the economy. I don't know whether it is it is your definition of love. But many people, I think now everybody has become each man for himself, God for us all. Is it true or is it not true? But when was the last time you bought something for somebody? Oh, help me. When was the last time you, you, you said good morning to somebody and encouraged the person and said, I'm praying for you? When was the last time you bought airtime for somebody? When was the last time you bought oranges for somebody? Even if you hear somebody is sick, you just send the person. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. So you realize that the demonstration of love is what? It's lacking mainly because we don't know the measure. Amen. So love is what? Kind. The next thing. Love does not what? Envy. Love does not what? Envy. What is envy? So... When somebody envies something, the person wants what belongs to somebody else. Amen. Oh, praise God. So, if I have a shoe, instead of thanking God that I have a shoe, you wish that shoe was what? Was yours. And you will do everything in your power to do what? To get that shoe from me, if even it means to steal it. Amen. But the Bible is saying love does not what? Envy. Amen. Oh, praise God. You know, and to the extent that Many people are so envious that when somebody has something, they find ways for the person to lose their thing. Amen. Oh, praise God. Oh, am I talking to somebody? So somebody goes to marry. Hey. So you two have married, eh? Oh, amen. So you two have married. And be, I, I give you three months. We remember three months. Amen. Oh, praise God. Am I talking to somebody? Envy. Amen. 
So after three months, he says, you go and see him. So how is your wife? Has she been teaching you the, in a very good way? That your wife, there, me, I know her. There's something I want to say, but me, I won't say it. Me, I won't say it. You putting ideas where? In your mind. Amen. I, I, I don't want to say it. How many years have you been married? One year. And you have not given birth. I, I don't want to say it too. I don't want to say it. Don't. I, I swear to God, I don't want to say it. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. The Bible says, love does not what? Uh, one year says, me. I won't say it to me. I won't say it, me. But if, if, if you push me, maybe I'll say it more. If you push me, maybe I'll say it more. Amen. Love does not what? And you know the painful part? Sometimes they come and tell you, that woman, leave the woman. No. If you leave the woman, the first person who chase the woman is that same person. Hallelujah. Amen. You have not been a boy before. Amen. Where are the boys in the house? Ah, you think we are fools. You get a woman, you think, oh, we'll come and tell you that you should leave her. Amen. And when you leave her, we we'll come and tell you, ah, he has left you. He doesn't know what he has missed. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. Don't worry. Eh? You don't know me. I know your value. Amen. By the time you realize, the person who said you should leave has taken. Amen. You tell it that it was by mistake. Amen. Love does not what? Envy. It means that when you love somebody, you must be happy for the person. Amen. If you and somebody go and look for visa and the person got the visa and you, you didn't get the visa, what must you do? Be happy for the person. Amen. Don't go to God and begin to pray. Oh God, what have I done to you? Is that how you are? How can you give this person the visa and not give me this visa? This prayer you are praying to God is a prayer of envy. Amen. God, why is that this person's children, they are all abroad and me, my children, they are all in Ghana. God, why? God, why? That is a prayer of what? Of envy. Amen. If you are praying, just pray and say that, Father, take my children abroad. Don't go and say that this person's children are abroad and me, my children are where? Are in Ghana. It is a prayer of what? Of envy. Amen. God, I've been going to church with Pastor Richard. Now Pastor Richard has this and has that. But me, I don't have some. It is a prayer of what? Of envy. And the Bible says that love envy have not. And people who envy, they never get anything of their own. Amen. Oh, praise God. Because instead of focusing on something bigger, they are looking at the small thing that God has given to somebody. Amen. Oh, praise God. No, because God can give you ten cars. And you are crying over somebody who has one car. Amen. God can give you a wedding in the plain. Hallelujah. And you are crying over somebody who has a wedding in, let's say, a garden. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. The Bible said, I love envy of not. Anytime you realize that you are envy, it means that there is no love in the system. Anytime you realize that you are not happy for people's success, it means that what? There is no love where? In your system. Amen. I don't know whether you've, you've seen this before. Those days when we were in school and we went and write exams and the results come and you get, let's say, uh, 50%, amen, and somebody gets 70%, and you see the person's results and you do your face like this. Amen. Instead of being happy that the person has done what, got 70%, got 80%, you frown your face as if the person is the one who wrote your paper for you. Amen. Some of you have done that before. You went to write an exam and your friend came. You thought all of you are born. You're now you're Bombay. And then your friend came and the person is happy. Hey, hey, I got 80. I got 80. What did you get? And maybe that paper, you got 40%. Amen. And you say, I got 40. <laughs> you do your face like, the way you do your face and talk to the person, the person knows that you must not laugh. Amen. I got 40. Oh. Love, NVF not. See, anytime you are happy about people's progress, God gives you your own progress. Amen. Anytime you celebrate people's success, 
God gives you your own success. Hallelujah. Don't be the kind of people who are always looking for opportunities to pull people down. It doesn't help. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Am I talking to somebody? Who was the last person you helped? And who was the last person you pulled down? Amen. And I'm surprised though. Sometimes I even don't know where these people come from. That they have so much energy in people pulling people down. Oh, praise God. It's serious though. They have so much energy in what? In pulling people down. I don't know where those people are from. <laughs> that energy you are using to pull me down. Can't you use that same energy to push me up? Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Or even push yourself up. Hallelujah. But they won't do anything about themselves. They will want to push other people what? Other people down. But look, there is a principle in life that the number of people you help go up, those people will also help you do what? Go up. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? See, if you stand on my shoulder and you go to the next level, the next thing you do is that you just pull your hand and do what? And pull me up. Amen. But the fact of the matter is that instead of helping the person go up on your shoulder, if the person is on your shoulder, you intentionally, oh, oh, as the person is trying, so climb, 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 climb. As you realize that the person has climbed and is helpless, then you do what? You push yourself. When the person falls and you say, oh, I didn't know, an ant bit my buttocks. Amen. People are specialists. And they think that, hey, Charlie, me, and the pound, or I should say, Gura. Amen. Some of you too, there are certain people in your life, if they don't go up, you, you never go up. Hallelujah. Oh, amen. Oh, praise God. That is how life is. It is the number of people you help go up. That can also help you to do what? To go up. Hallelujah. That is why love does not do what? Envy. Amen. Love does not parade itself. Love does not what? Parade itself. It means that love is not arrogant. Amen. Oh, praise God. Love is not what? Arrogant. Amen. You know some people, you, don't, you can't even talk to them. Oh, praise God. You and them went to the same school, oh, and they are doing old school reunion as they are coming. John, amen. Especially if they are married, at that time we went for the old school reunion, they are married. If you, Mama, they look at you. And they walk like this. Ernestina. What are they looking at? They are saying if you are married, if you are not married, don't talk to them. And sometimes if, if you hey, I cause here, they come and hold your stomach. Once you are not pregnant, don't talk to them. Amen. Am I are you am I, are you getting what I'm trying to say? How many of you have called people like that who are snobbish like that? You know that this guy, I know him. This guy, I know him, pa. And you call him and he's like, you see that thing? Amen. If you are not rolling car key like this, and as they are working, as we are all doing the old school, you know, they'll be doing their key like this. Amen. If you have car key, put it in your pocket. Amen. But they'll be doing something like this. We've ever seen people like that. When people come, will hang their car key so that you know that they have key. Amen. Oh, this, and when we are having the meeting in the room, they will say, oh, no, no, no. This place is too hot. Can we do the meeting outside? Amen. Do you know why they want to do it outside? No. They want people to see their cars. Amen. So when we go, they don't want to take anything from the car, but they will intentionally press the thing. Bing, 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 bing. Oh, I left this thing. I left this thing. I'm not talking to somebody at all. Parading itself. Amen. Oh, praise God. I'm not talking to somebody. Some people, iPhone, because they have iPhone, they even the China one. Amen. The small iPhone they have, when they are even coming to church, they hold it like this. They hold their phone like this. Only iPhone, I mean, frame it. If you don't have iPhone, don't do it. Parading is, that is not love. Hallelujah. And of course, if you are behaving in this way, the Bible says that you have become nothing. You have become like noise. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. 
It's a matter of talking to somebody at all. Noise. And so many people are parading themselves. And you see, at every level you are, somebody is higher. Amen. Oh, praise God. Please, are you hearing me? At every level you are, somebody is what? Is higher. And some of you think you are, you are the most beautiful girls in town. Amen. I made them home, fool. When they call you, cry, you don't mind. Hello, I want it, I want it. Amen. Eh, when we're about to send me that, we are see our Bible. Amen. Oh, praise God. Tell somebody you are beautiful, you are beautiful. I said, tell somebody you are beautiful. It's true that you are beautiful, but let me tell you the truth. There is somebody more beautiful than you. Amen. Some of the men to you work as if you are the, you are God's only gift to humanity. Amen. Without you, the world will not be created. Amen. Love is not what. Amen. Oh, praise God. Some of you, so if they say. They are even ushering you, and you say, You look at the usher who is ushering you. You look at the shoe of the usher. And you look at the head of the usher. And you ask the person, Where is the pastor's chair? That is the area I must what? I must sit. Amen. Oh, praise God. Oh, am I talking to somebody? Love is not what? Pabdab. If they bring you and they take you to the ch- back, go and sit there like that. Amen. Oh, amen. If they put you on the floor, you sit there like that. Amen. Don't come and amen. Make yourself bigger than you are. Amen. Oh, praise God. Love is not what? And if there is anything about pride, eh, the Bible says pride goes before what? A fall. Amen. Pride goes before what? A fall. Before anybody will fall. What goes ahead of them is what? It's pride. Amen. Oh, praise God. Love is not puffed up. There's no pride in love. Amen. Love can easily say, I'm sorry. Amen. But some of you, the last time you said sorry is what? Seven years ago. Come on, Christ, but it slipped out of your mouth. Amen. Shake someone, ask the person, when was the last time you said sorry? I said, shake somebody. Ask the person, what was the last time you said sorry? Somebody said, Tuesday. Somebody said, four years ago. Hey, love is not what? Proud. Amen. And some people are proud. I said, some people are what? Proud. I know some proud people, eh? I even wonder, you see, if you even have money and you are proud, it's understandable. Amen. Oh, praise God. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you have money, there should be something why you are proud. Amen. If you have money and you are proud, it's what? It's understandable. Although you are not supposed to be proud. Amen. You are not supposed to be proud. Tell somebody you are not supposed to be proud. But if you have money and you are proud small, we understand. Amen. But there are some people too. They are or if you are beautiful and you are proud, it's understandable. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise God. Am I talking to somebody at all? How many of you know people like that? They, they don't have money. They too, they are not beautifully made. The Bible says some are what? We are what? Wonderfully and what? They are not wonderfully made. Amen. But the kind of pride they are exhibiting. Eh? Say mercy, Lord. Love is not what? Proud. And proud people don't go far in life. Do you know why? Because they antagonize everybody around them. The people who must help them, they make sure that the people hate them. Amen. Oh, praise God. To the extent that if you don't even wear a watch, they won't talk to you. Oh, praise God. Am I talking to somebody? That is what? Pride, though. That is what? Pride. Proud people are the people who say, this is my level. 
I don't eat kenke. If I don't eat kenke. Amen. I know my I don't eat kenke. Don't worry. Amen. But proud people, they come and visit you. Amen. And then you give them kenke and, and sardine. Amen. Oh, praise God. Then they call you. Come. You that give them the food, oh. Come, come, come. Which sardine is this? Oh, I know. So, uh, uh, <laughs> more in the country, oh. I don't know more. Uh, uh, which sardine is this? If you make a mistake and you tell them this is delayed sardine, they say, what? If it's not Titus, I'm not eating. Praise the Lord. Titus, or nothing. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. If you give them water, they will tell you, it's not belakwa. Sometimes they used to hit you. Amen. Oh, praise God. Am I talking to somebody? Pride, oh. Praise the Lord. You can be going somewhere with them and then you, you, you are stopping tro tro. You say, what? Tro tro. I don't take tro tro. Amen. Praise God. Meanwhile, if you are not there, they will take tro tro. Make it serious. Right. Hallelujah. Even those who drive, they park their cars and take trotro. Hallelujah. You, you don't even have car. You say you don't take trotro. But the Bible says that love is not what? Love is not proud. Love can humble itself and say what? I'm sorry. Amen. Oh, praise God. That's right. Love does not behave rudely and does not seek its own. It means that love is not what? Rude. And love is not selfish. Amen. Oh, praise God. Love is not what? Root. And love is not what? Selfish. Let's just say, if you love somebody, you are not disrespectful. Hallelujah. You are not what? Disrespectful. I love my mother. If you are rude to her, it means you don't love her. Amen. I'm not talking to somebody. The person you love, if you are rude to the person, it means that you what? You are not showing love. Hallelujah. And if you are selfish, you are seeking your own, it means that you are not doing what? You are not showing love. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Am I talking to somebody? God, I love you. I love you more than anything in the world. Meanwhile, when you carry your money, you go and buy watches. You go and buy fufu and light soup. Amen. And then when you come to the church, you say, Oh God, I love you. Which kind of love is that? Amen. Oh, praise God. Is that my talking to somebody? Which kind of love seeks its own, but does not seek the interest of the one they would they love? Amen. It's like a Christian who never brings somebody to church and says that, God, I love you. I love your kingdom. Hallelujah. You don't love God, hallelujah. Because if you love God, you will seek his own. Not somebody, if you love God, you will seek his own. Not that every day you are seeking your own and what God, God wants. You don't want to do what God wants. That is not love. Because love does not seek his own. That is why when somebody passes through rain and brings you fried rice, you say, ah, this person loves me, amen. Do you know why? Because he is not seeking his own. He wants rain to beat him. And he will use his money to buy fried rice and give it to you to do what? To eat. Amen. Oh, praise God. Somebody who loves you does not mind going hungry so that you get food to do what? To eat. Why? He does not seek his own. He is seeking for what? For you. That is why sometimes parents, the things they must use for themselves, they forgo it and they do what? They use it for their children. Why? Love what? Does not seek his own. Amen. I remember one time I was... I was not well. Amen. Oh, praise God. Those days I was in the university. I was not well. And it was around 1 a.m. And the way I was not well, I said I wanted, I wanted hot tea and bread and egg. Amen. And I pointed that there's bread and egg at some junction. Hallelujah. 1 a.m. Praise God. 
The place too was dangerous. They've been saying that people have been using knife and the rest to shoot people there. Amen. Sometimes children, we can be wicked though. Amen. Children, we can be selfish though. True of us. True. So after I said it, I went back on my bed. Hallelujah. Do you know that one hour later, I saw my mother bringing that tea and that bread and that egg. Hallelujah. I said, hey! You were not afraid that they would go and chook you with a knife. Did I even care that they would chook you with a knife? I didn't care. I sat down, took the tea, fired it, took the bread, fired it, and took the egg and what? And fired it. When I finished, I did what? I slept. When I woke up, all the sickness had gone away. Amen. What am I trying to say? I'm saying that love does not seek its own. Amen. Children, stop being selfish. Amen. I said, children, stop being what? Selfish. And those of us who say we love, we must begin to seek the interest of the ones we do what? We love. Amen. And especially if you are in church and you say you are a Christian and you say you love God, you must begin to seek the interest of God. Hallelujah. As much as you want God to seek your interest, you must begin to do what? To seek the interest of God. God, what would you want? What would you have me do? That is the interest you must begin to do what? To seek. That is what shows that you do what? You love God. Amen. 